recent typhoon in the Philippines has been catastrophic and millions of children have been impacted. The NBA family is teaming up with UNICEF to bring life-saving, clean water, food, medicine, and shelter that are urgently needed. Join our team. Support UNICEF. Please text RELIEF to 864-233 to donate $10 or visit unicefusa.org. Thank you, and maraming salamat po. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. The Arthur Diamond's trip, young and intern time. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Real fans, real talk. Got it. They got the hottest bloggers. It's Jeremy Linhart. We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. I'm talking about the greatest. Yeah, Go yeah. check out the archives, even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. <laughs> Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about, son. RealFansRealTalk.com, I'm out one. Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Uh, real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. I'm Mark the Stat Man Skevich, and I have to apologize to the fans out there that you had to wait. Two entire days for the real Super Bowl post game show. But here we are live on Bronx Net Television. Real fans, real talk. A lot of sports to talk about today. Before I get into that, though, let me introduce my co host, the main man to my right, Trip Young. What's going on, Trip? Oh, man, I feel good today. It, it's so good to be back because the snow kept us away from Bronx Net these past couple of weeks. They kept us out, but they didn't keep us away forever. But the Super Bowl is finally over. My man Tom Too Cool got his fourth ring. And on top of that, which is probably bigger than that, wifey boo, Serena, went out to Australia, you know, got the, US, the, excuse me, the Australian Open title, beat up on Sharapova, you know, just to, to, to let the people know who is really the number one seed, you know, in all of tennis. So wifey boo, wifey for lifey, Serena, you know Trip, Trip Young loves you, baby. I, I'm ready for you to come back home now. I miss you. But uh, we got a lot of sports to get into. I can't be talking about wifey all day. That is true. And so, speaking of Super Bowl post game. There was a, a little post-game uh, festivities going on on the field when the game was not officially over, but we all knew the game was over. And then the Seattle Seahawks, you know, I, I mean, I had a lot of respect for the Seattle Seahawks, but, I mean, that was just plain, downright, sore loser status there, what they did, breaking out into a fight. There's just no need for that trip. I, I don't know what they were thinking. Like, I, I understand, you know, it's very <laughs> emotional to be losing a Super Bowl, and it's very frustrating, especially when it's right there, you know, one yard away, so, so to speak. And uh, we're, we're going to get to the play call in a bit, but the post-game festivities, Trip Young, what do you make of this Seattle Seahawks, Legion of Boom, and, and, and everything that uh, – the, the disgusting uh, acts there Listen, towards the end of the you game. You said it. You, you summed it up, you know, very well, Statman. I mean, it just it makes them seem like sore losers. And you know what? And you don't have to do that because the Seattle Seahawks are a great team. They played a great game of football. You know, okay, you made the wrong call on, on that last play, but don't go and ruin everything else that you work for and make yourselves look like what people, you know, already say about you anyway especially with guys like, you know, Richard Sherman and whatnot. You know how they talk about him. He's a quote-unquote thug. So why do that? Why, why spoil a great Super Bowl? You know, you guys had a great year. Nonetheless, nobody can take any, anything away from you guys. Okay, it came down to one play, may have been a bad call, but that's not on, on, on the Patriots. So why now come out, you know, and, and, and just start a little brawl like, like that? To me, that's corny. And it just looks bad on, on, on the entire, you know, Seahawks organization to, to do that. Come on, at the end of the game, it's already over. Come on, man. All right, you tip your hat to the victor, and you move on. You come back for next season. You know, you guys still have a great team. Russell Wilson is still 
you know, one of one of the, the best quarterbacks, man, I got to give him his, his credit where credit is due because he got them there. He, he had a, he had a, a poor performance in the championship game, but that fourth quarter, he, he brought them brought them back, took them to the Super Bowl, and then in the Super Bowl he played very well. I mean, up until that last that last play, you know, what are you gonna do? But you don't you don't do that. You don't mess up everything like that. Cause I think it's just corny, you know. Yeah, and uh, Gronkowski out there was on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live and his thoughts on the, the extracurricular activities there, the fighting going on at the end. It was, uh, he basically was saying to Jimmy Kimmel, first he said that he wasn't, do, he wasn't involved in the fight. Then uh, Jimmy c clearly points out the video with uh, <laughs> Gronk out there uh, throwing, throwing some punches and... Uh, Gronk is like, For Roger, please don't find me. And uh, then he goes and says, listen, you know, I, I got shoved. And then I was like, uh, this last game of the season, screw it. I'm throwing some haymakers. And <laughs> sure enough, it, you, you see him throwing some pretty uh, hard punches out there. But, I mean, you guys got helmets on. Who are you throwing punches to? Like, really? Like, you're not. You're not. <laughs> you're not <laughs> I understand Gronk's perspective that he's not going to get suspended, but maybe he gets suspended next year. I, I doubt they'll go that far, but at the same time, it was a no-win situation there with the classless act started by the Seattle Seahawks. But getting to the play that everyone is talking about, you know, right there, a yard away, maybe a yard and a half, and you don't give it to Marshawn Lynch. And uh, a lot of people don't make sense of this, and I, I don't really want to have Pete Carroll's back on this, but at the same time, you, you basically, as a defense, you're expecting run. So Pete Carroll tried to do something different. He tried to catch them off guard with a short pass. Obviously didn't work. It's a bonehead decision now, being a Monday morning uh, coach or Monday morning quarterback, you know, it's easy to say the fact that it didn't work, that it was a, a dumb call. But if he would have gotten a t the touchdown, then Pete Carroll is a genius. To, you know, so. Um, set man, do we have a, is our football on the set? Yes. Could you p p please hand me the football set? Man? It's a, it's a. Well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, I want I want to show you guys this football. If we, we could get a shot on this, it's it's a, it's a Patriots official football because it's a little <laughs> deflated. <laughs> that's for that's for my grip. <laughs> all right, now what I, now what I'm gonna say. All right, this is, first of all, shout out to this is new football right here. You know we always supporting the kids on Real Fans Real Talk. Now what I want to say is you have a man by the name of Marshawn Lynch on your team, correct? That is correct. Also known as Beast Mode, correct? That is also correct. I believe in the, with the past three seasons he's had the most touchdowns and most rushing shots. Am, am I also correct on that one? Statman, you statman, well, you can check, you can run well, the stats on that one. Well, Demarco Murray, you know. But um, now, what I want to say is you have one yard, right? One yard to get. He just finished running four yards, right? Mm -hmm. So at this point, what you do is you take this, you hand off the football to, to beast mode, and you, you let him run it in for the touchdown right there. There it is right there. That's one yard right there. That's, that's, all, that's all you need to do. I don't understand well, the pass. Don't I don't know why you would call a pass, but it, it's just crazy. Goal line defense is a little bit different. I mean, I still agree. I mean, it's hard not to agree with that because even if he gets stuffed, you have the timeout. You could go and then call the pass play. I mean, a quarterback but, sneak or something it, yeah. at, at that point I in the game. Mean, it's not like it was fourth down and, you yeah. know, you felt like the rush wasn't going to work. You had, you had more time on the clock. You had another timeout. Rush it, then call the timeout, but... And then you know. hoop if you want to try something different, if they're wrong. Because now, I will say this. Because actually, the Patriots' uh, red zone defense was actually very good during yeah. the Super Bowl. So I, I can understand that. Third down, he runs it three times and doesn't get it. You say, all right, maybe we want to change it up, try to go for the pass. Okay, I understand that. But not when you have 40-something seconds on the clock, you have a timeout left. And you don't try to go for the run after he just came off of running for four yards? I mean... I don't understand. I, I don't understand it either. I, I try to make sense of it here in the sense that, you know, the Patriots defense was expecting a run. They tried to catch him off guard. And, you know, I, I think he should have ran it, called a timeout, then maybe run a play action, 
the very next play to call, call, you know, get them off guard if there is a next play because Marshawn Lynch probably could have gotten the touchdown. Who knows if Brady comes back with, you know, what is it, around 30 yeah, seconds 30 seconds, left. Yeah. Cause even because I was a little bit, I was wondering why Belichick didn't call a timeout when there was 40 seconds uh, left in the game, you know, too. I thought he might even call the timeout, just stop that clock. Yeah. So then when they, you know, they go for it and it's, a, and it's a pass play. First of all, let me go to one of the fan mail questions. Luke from Houston who writes in, do you guys think Marshawn Lynch would have scored the go-ahead touchdown in, uh, in Super Bowl 49? Um, like I said, the, the Patriots' red zone defense was playing very well. We saw they forced him to kick a couple of field goals. Is it possible Marshawn Lynch can make that one-yard run? It, absolutely. One of the best running backs in football. Like I said, he just came off of running for four yards. And, I mean, you got a couple of downs to do it. I think he could have got it. Obviously not 100%, but I think it was the, the right call to make would have been to, to run the football right now, there. Now, you mentioned he ran four yards the previous play. The defense is a little bit different around the five-yard line than it is on the goal line. That's when you pack all the big boys up there, and, and it's a little bit tougher to get that one yard than it is to get yards when you're on the five-yard line. So I would say it's a 50-50 shot. I mean, who knows? We don't have the crystal ball out there. And it, it, it's a tough call to make, but I, I honestly think it's 50-50. He could have made it. He could have not made it. Um, you know, I, I kind of figured, and Trip Young also figured, that the Patriots were going to win. So the fact that we were right, you know, on Real Fans Real Talk this past Thursday when we aired live in Brooklyn while we had special guest, uh, Brooklyn's own rapper, D Chambers out there. Uh, it's it's out there, the officially in the record books. Trip Young, stat man, both picking the Patriots. I'm not a Patriots fan, ladies and gentlemen, and especially anybody that's coming from Boston. Uh, Tom Too Cool, I'm not a fan of him either. And you know, I I just said uh, to all the gamblers out there, bet with your head, not with your hate. I think there's a lot of people out there that were going to bet on the Seahawks because of the Flake Gate and the hate towards. Uh, the Patriots and they were going to be think that would be more reason why you should have bet on Tom Brady and the Patriots because of the flag game because now they they had a little even more to prove yeah. out there out there because of that because you don't want to go down you're already being called cheaters and whatnot so you want to at least go out and then come and play your best and win that Super Bowl. My my reasoning for picking the Patriots though was we saw an NFC Championship that Legion of Boom is not invincible. Aaron Rodgers has a great offense. They were able to put up points against Seattle. And Seattle kind of got lucky in a sense with a late comeback, and it, it kind of showed that, you know, the Seahawks weren't invincible. It, the game wasn't being played in Seattle. And so Aaron Rodgers you know, wasn't 100% in that yeah, game either. Exactly. So, I mean, but Aaron Rodgers, he, you know, is still great regardless. You got Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb. You got a lot of weapons there, and you got yeah. a lot of weapons on the Patriots. You have Gronkowski, who's a beast. You got Edelman. Amendola, he's, he's got so many weapons that it's not like a situation where you put Sherman on one of them and, you know, Chancellor on somebody else. And, I mean, it's a great defense, but going up against a better offense than the Broncos had last year combined with a better defense than the Broncos yeah. had last year and a different Seattle Seahawks team. So, yeah. and, uh, and, and you know what? Even which which I thought was 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 crazy, but I, I kind of said this too. I said when we were going going back to the championship games, I thought that if the Ravens beat the Patriots, um, you know they would have a better chance. But it was actually uh, Bill Belichick who said we would be more concerned about being down to the Ravens than to the Seahawks because of because of it, I don't know just those two, two teams playing each other. But like you said, it's just a lot of weapons out there. Gronkowski, Edelman. I mean that touchdown that he caught, he just juked the life out of out of the defender to get into the end zone right there. And even with the when I thought that you know, I'm sure I wasn't the only person that uh, lucky catch. I in my mind I said, wow, is this the New York Giants all over again <laughs> right, right now with Tom Brady? Because I mean you got to be kidding me with that catch. I mean you fall over, roll over on your side, the football bounces up, you still manage to come down and catch it, and then on, on you know but. They go back down the field, and they and they, they get to go ahead. Another exciting catch and uh, a season filled with exciting catches and another exciting catch in the Super Bowl. And one thing's for sure, I think all the fans out there, whether you're Seahawks fan, Patriots fan, or none of the above, are just happy that 
this Super Bowl wasn't like last year where it was a complete blowout. We got to see an edge of your seat thriller out there. Obviously, Seahawks fans are a little disappointed, but to, you, you got to, for the love of the game, you got to really love a, a great Super Bowl. Definitely one for the books there. Um, but moving along, though, we got a lot more to talk about. We had our. Well, well hold on a second, man. Before, before we do go on, because I want to ask this. Because there's all this conspiracy theory talk with that, you know, surrounding that that whole play. Do, what do you think about that? Was, this, was there a conspiracy theory going on right there? Was it was it something where they just wanted Russell Wilson to get to get to play over? Like what what was it? What, what what was going on with that? Do you do you believe in the conspiracy theory? For the last play of the game? Yes, on that on that was? on that last play. Why they passed the ball instead of running the play? Because that's what that's what the critics are talking about right now. No, I honestly think it's what I said before that you know Pete Carroll figured the defense is expecting run. They're gonna you know stack you know the line with all their big boys and they could you know just try to shove a, a quick short pass in there. And it wasn't that far off of a pass. It wasn't like a horrible pass. It wasn't a good pass, but uh, yeah, Butler just got there. He, yeah, he just flat out yeah. got to the football. I mean, if he if he he went, uh, it was a, a great defensive play on his part. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, you know, it, it was would have been right on the money if it wasn't for a great yeah, defensive play. Yeah, because he kind of so. stepped in and took the football away. Yeah. So yeah, you you're 100 right about that. It wasn't it wasn't a bad throw. You know, the play might have actually worked. It just happened that the defender made a great play on the football and. That is actually the reason why uh, Tom Brady, who was named the MVP, said that he plans on giving the truck that you get to Butler for that play because, you know, as great as Tom Brady played, you know, 300-plus yards, four touchdowns, it was that play that won the game for the New England Patriots. So yeah. he said he would actually give him the truck. There. It was a nice truck, too. I, I wouldn't mind having the truck either myself, you know. But it, you no, know, no free drops for the company. Of the yeah, I, I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna say the name. I'd say the truck looked good. That's all. Yeah, that, that's it all. Definitely that did though. Well, you yeah. know what? Before we do, I gotta say this. Okay, a halftime show. I love Katy Perry. I thought, thought she was good, but Katy Perry has no rhythm whatsoever. I'm sorry. It's bad. Missy out there showing you up, Katy Perry. You got to get your get your dance grooves together or something. You're going to have to watch a, 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 a tape or get to the hip-hop abs or something. Dance groove, Darren's dance groove, something got to give Katy Perry because you ain't got no rhythm whatsoever. I'm sorry to say the performance was great, but you can't dance, girl. I'm sorry. I, I had to get that off my chest, that man. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to get that off my chest. You got to say what you got to say. I'm not going to take any shots at Katy Perry because me and her got to hang out one of these days. Hey, listen. So, but uh, since you're on the subject of uh, Tom Brady, fourth Super Bowl uh, championship, another Super Bowl MVP to add to the list. Uh, we got another fan mail question. Jared from Hartford writes, where do you guys rank Tom Brady now on the all-time quarterback list? Uh, I'm going to say like 25, 26. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, Statman. Back at it again. Um, I mean, first of all, I, I want to—I got to say this to uh, to our, our other co-host, uh, Face Facts. Is me, me and him. We go back, back and, and forth, forth on the Peyton Tom Brady. So I got to say this to you: Peyton didn't beat those uh, Seahawks. Tom Brady did, brother. So you got to respect that, man. But um, Tom Brady had a better surrounding team and a better defense than Peyton did the year they played. So. Well, yeah, but Peyton played horribly. Yeah, that's the difference. Good. Tom Brady played well against that defense, but um, but no, I mean, I, I mean, because I, I guess now the question is, Tom Brady or Joe Montana? If you said Joe Montana, I'm not gonna be mad at you. If you said Tom Brady, I wouldn't be mad at you. But I'm going, I'm gonna say he's not lower than three on the all-time list, wherever you have him. I'm, I, I would say not lower than three. I myself, I probably, I put him at two. Um. But you know what? It's, it's it's rough. It could be a little even because I mean, you look at at Joe Montana. You know, he did have a a, a guy out there named uh, Jerry Rice, who a lot of people will say is the best player of all time, alongside of him, which is always a, a bonus. But I mean, like I said, if you say Joe Montana, I'm not gonna be mad at you for saying Joe Montana. And if you say Tom Brady, obviously I'm not gonna be mad at you for saying that either. I don't think you could list them lower than third though on the all time list. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to put him in the top five. I could probably put him at three. Uh, Joe Montana's up there. I'm a big Peyton Manning fan, 
Uh, I, I think the way he leads an offense, I mean, he doesn't get it done in the playoffs, which is obviously something that you could, you know, you're going to hold against him. But um, there's also the factor of it being a different league than it was in the past. When Dan Marino got his, you know, broke the 5,000 yards back then, it was a different league. I'm not putting Dan Marino ahead of him, but maybe a John Elway you could probably debate. Um, you know, Brett Favre, you know, playing over age 40 and still being well at that age, plus what he did during his prime. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say Tom Brady is above, uh, you know, higher. Than, uh, he's definitely top five. He's not lower than that. Maybe top three. You got Terry Bradshaw, who won a bunch of championships out there with the Steelers. Um, so... Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna say top three, but it's possible. If, if you said third, if, if I, I could probably put him at number three. So. All right. Well, shout out to Jared. Shout out to the whole Hartford, and also shout out to Luke. And, uh, I got. Too. I got a question for you. While we're still on Tom Brady, we're seeing now Peyton Manning. He did great the first half of the season. Second half of the season, he kind of started slowing down. He's pushing forty now. How many more years do you see Tom Brady playing at an elite level? I would say at least two. At least I, I give him two years. I'll, I'll definitely I'll say two years, and then I got to reevaluate after after the next two years. I mean, but I mean again, like if he's going to do what he, I mean, because you have to think, in order to get to the Super Bowl, he played against a very good Ravens defense. He played against a great Seahawks defense. You know, so. And he looked, he looked, he looked really good. He looked really good during. I mean, he had an MVP like season. You know, if they had gave gave Tom Brady the MVP, I wouldn't even been mad at that this year because he played great. So until I actually see the signs of him slowing down, you know, consistently, because I mean, he had that against the Chiefs. They were like, "Oh, Tom Brady is finished," and you know, we had that whole whole debate. Not here, but people had that debate. But um, and then we you know we saw what happened the rest of the season and then on to winning the Super Bowl. But I, I'm, I'm gonna give him two years and then like I said after that I'll, I'll reevaluate the situation. Um, and I got I got to shout out um, another friend of the show, Coy Rodriguez, comedian. I spoke to him on on Facebook. I had to give him his props because the Patriots finally won. They didn't beat the Giants, Corey, but they did get their Super Bowl. So he he's actually waiting to come back onto the show and to to talk about his Patriots. They finally, you know, got back to the promised land. Do we allow him to come back on the <laughs> we show? We got we got to give him his due. He's going to be gloating about the. <laughs> we well, he can't gloat to us Giants fans because yeah, no, no, we can't. still yeah. we still got the Patriots yeah. number. The and, Super Bowl. and and we picked the Patriots to win this one too. So yeah. it wasn't like we we went against them on this one. But you know, so shout out shout out to Corey, man. Salute, brother. We got. We definitely got to get back up soon and make that make that happen. And we got a lot of other uh, special guests coming in the near future. A lot of interviews conducted at the Bowling for Peace charity celebrity basketball mm -hmm. uh, game that was uh, this two Saturdays ago, a week and a half ago. Big names out there like Jim Jones, and we had, we had the rapper that I mentioned earlier, D Chambers, another rapper, Graf, Math Hoffa. Uh, Mark John Jeffries, who's a um, you know actor who played uh, 50 Cent in the Get Rich or Die Trying movie, as well as uh, some other notable roles as well. So a lot of big names out there in the Bowling for Peace charity event. Had a great time out there. Of course, shout out to H2O, Haran Hargrave. We're, we're going to have all those uh, interviews for you in the near future. Make mm -hmm. sure you follow us on Twitter, at Real Fan Talk and facebook.com forward slash real fans real talk like us on facebook we'll be posting those videos on twitter instagram instagram is the same as our twitter at real fan talk we are live every tuesday 5 30 p.m eastern standard time on bronxnet television and again live on bpn in brooklyn every thursday at 8 for more information or all our individual twitter or show times channels how to watch us live on the internet for those of you watching us on YouTube. Uh, just check out our website for the full details, realfansrealtalk.com. Now, Trip Young, Bowling for Peace. Uh, I mean, obviously, it was a great event. What, what would you think would be one of the highlights that you enjoyed most? Well, let me say this, because I had sustained the injury uh, a couple of hours before game time, so I actually was not able to play this old shifty knee of mine. 
Um, so I didn't, I didn't actually get on the court. I know the fans were upset because I didn't get to go out there after I told them I was going to lose. I said 65 points. I was going to get 40 rebounds. And uh, what was I said? One, 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 steal. one steal, right? Yeah. And, um, but no, so man. You're going to do the Kobe with no assists. Yeah. But um, no, you know what? Honestly, it was a great experience. Packed out. Once again, shout out to Haran H2O Hargrave and uh, Punch Dollar as well for putting the whole event together. Man, the fans had an amazing time. I mean, just just being out there. I mean, we we out there with Jim Jones out there balling. I mean, looking like he was like you know thirty. I ain't gonna say he's younger than that because he was a little out of breath when he was up there. But you know, Jim Jones looking young out there, getting his little oopty loops on. He throwing alleys out there. Uh, D Chambers again, like you said, Math Hoffa, Murder Mook, who hit the, the go ahead three point in the second game, which I actually went into overtime. Uh, I mean, Steph Lover, you know, stat man on the sidelines doing commentary with Steph Lover out there. You know, it, just, it was a great experience. Julito, you know, another another uh, veteran from the wire. Mac Wiles out there, Graf, just, just a great experience. You know, I mean, we out there. Real Fans, Real Talk was definitely in, in the building too. But it was two great games, and it was for a great, great cause. Um, I know I spoke to uh, Ron uh, recently. He's working on putting the next ball for peace together. Um, so we're going to definitely keep you guys posted on that. And, you know, Real Fans Real Talk is always going to be in the building because we always support. That's what we do, man. You got to support because if you don't support, then who's going to support, man? Everybody. You know, you got you to gotta do it in order for people to, 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 to catch on and get on the bandwagon and start supporting themselves. But it's a great thing, man, that, that Haran did. And we're going to have the interviews coming up soon. If you go on our Instagram... Again, at Real Fan Talk, you can definitely see a couple of the clips. A little bit, you can see a little bit of that that uh, Jim Jones uh, interview with with Statman. Um, I got a quick, you know, little segment of, of the Murder Mook interview and uh, DJ Don DeMarco. So just make sure you get on that Instagram, get on all our social media, man, because it's up there. Everything, everything is up there that we're doing. So y'all really need to follow the movement if you're not already. Get that at Real Fan Talk, man, and, and get on, get at us. Yeah, definitely. And uh, speaking of Instagram, I posted a, a little joke out there with Kobe Bryant when I asked him who did he think would win the NFL Super Bowl, and he said, uh, I, I don't watch football, too much passing. And he was right. There was too much passing because the yeah. last play shouldn't have been a pass. So. That, yeah, actually, that's, you know what? For once, Kobe was right. <laughs> Shout out to Kobe. He had that successful uh, surgery on his on his shoulder. He's looking to come back next season. Uh, somebody that's looking to come back this season though is Paul George, and um, I don't know. We're gonna have to keep you guys posted on, on what's going on with that one. I'm hoping. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get to shot for shot today. I don't know if the voice in the sky is available for us today, but uh, we'll see if we can uh, if we can work that out. But um, once again, balling for peace was great. But from 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 the from the celebrities. To the real life, Atlanta Hawks 19-game winning streak. It was snapped last night by Anthony Davis and the uh, and the Pelicans and a great performance by Anthony Davis. He's he's having a, a MVP season. Yeah, himself. I mean you gotta you gotta really when you rank the best players in the world right now, you gotta put him. You know, probably second above Kevin Durant. I, I mean, Kevin yeah, Durant is, I might have know. to. I mean, I know he's the MVP still, but, you know, he's been in and out this season, and he hasn't played like Kevin Durant. I think that, you know, Anthony Davis has played monstrosity. He was just straight madness this season. And, um, you know, I know they're, they're not in playoff contention, but they're also in the West. You know, they're all over 500, though. So, you know, put them in the East might be a different story. Yeah, I definitely uh, agree with you on that one, but... um. The Cavs are still streaking, though, even though they the whole uh, uh, streak w was snapped. So uh, I'm sure you're happy about LeBron I am, and Kyrie. I am definitely happy about that. Uh, 11 games in a row now. Um, they do have a big game coming up against the Clippers. It is at home in Cleveland, though, so I think that, you know, that I, I'm, I'm liking that one being that it, it's a home game, but it's going to be a great matchup. LeBron is actually healthy. You know, he's looking, he's looking good. Kyrie is out there balling. You know, um, and it, and it's kind of crazy, but it, like this really does remind me of you know the Miami Big Three situation because you know it was LeBron and Wade, you know, obviously doing their thing, and then you know Chris Bosh came along eventually had to settle into that role. Um, so now I think that because I don't even think right now Kevin Love is really settled into to that role, you know, but they're playing some great basketball. 
uh, Timothy Mozgov. I mean, he is playing some amazing yeah, he's a key basketball. Factor yes, in that, in that, that trade. Jr. showing his stuff every J now and then. Jr. Yeah. new life. You know, he's had some some big games for them. You know, Shumper finally coming back, and I think the team is is playing well. I know they they're still looking to make uh, one or two more moves before the trade deadline. I know they were talking about um, Mo Williams. They were also actually talking about your guy Prigioni because they wanted to add a, a veteran uh, backup point guard. But, um, I mean, they're, they're looking great. They're playing great right now, you know, 11 games in a row. We'll see how, how it goes. But I think we, we're starting to see a lot of movement in the Eastern Conference now, too. I mean, the Hawks are still, you know, stamping that number one spot right now. But the Cavs are definitely climbing up the up the ladder. And um. You mentioned the Clippers, that they face them soon. Your, your Brooklyn Nets, uh, the hat that you're wearing there, just came mm -hmm. off of a nail-biter victory against the Clippers as well. So they might want some get-back because of that. They might try to take it out on the yeah, cab. They might be like, <laughs> we just lost to the Nets. Like, yeah, we got we got to show off you know, yeah. and show out. But um, at, at the same time, getting b back to the Cavs, though, out of the 11-game streak, they had nine games in a row, the last nine where their defense really stepped up and they kept kept uh, every team under 100 points. So that's that's impressive for them as well. And plus the one-two punch of uh, LeBron James and Kyrie Irving, I think 50 or over 52 points per game between the two of them combined. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're both doing their thing. Like you said, Love hasn't really found his role yet, but the one-two punch of Kyrie and LeBron James seems to be getting it done. Eleven-game winning streak. LeBron said he just needs to get that confidence back in in his shot. So if he can do that, I mean, because I mean we know Kevin Love is a knockdown three-point shooter, and they got a lot of shooters out there. So if you can step up and just make them threes and then rebound, you know, the, the Cavs are gonna be a very good basketball team. Because I mean, I still think that Kevin Love is the best power forward um, in basketball. He just has to get that niche right for the Cavaliers and what they need of him. And then I think that he'll be fine and the Cavaliers will do very well. But I think that they are going to start getting closer and closer to that number one seed in the East. All right. And speaking of the East, my New York Knicks, um, are they tanking or not? What have they been like? <laughs> they have the starter to beat teams, and I'm yeah. like, why are you winning? Like, Yeah, like, I, wait a I, I, I see it as, like, if they're losing every single game, they're gonna start not selling, you know, not selling tickets towards the end of the season, and yeah. they kind of want to, you know, sell tickets to be like, you know, nobody wants to go if they know for a fact that their team is losing. So, I guess that's what it is. But, if I mean, they still even. I mean, even during the years when the Knicks were losing, they were still making a whole lot of money. Yeah. So I, I mean, mean, if the, you're gonna, the Knicks were always like a business type of thing yeah. first, but they don't, they didn't always sell out during those years. When they were losing, they didn't always sell out. And no, no, I know that. But what I'm saying is the Knicks losing still generates more money than half the teams in the league winning. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> so no you might as that. well just, you know, play like you were playing, just get that really good draft pick, and then you come back with, a, with you know, maybe the number one overall draft pick. Maybe you can yeah. get Okafor from Duke, and you combine him with Melo, then you go out and get Aldridge or Gasol or, or Rondo, somebody, you know. It's, you, it, we are yet to see whether Melo's going to play the second half of the season after the all-star break so I'm hoping he doesn't just so that we could get those uh, you know those losses <laughs> is this what it's come to I mean, is this really it's, what it's, it's come to th they were losing anyway I mean it would be a lot better than being the ninth seed like they were last year I mean I, I don't know I can't make heads or tails <laughs> what, what are you trying to do you're trying to lose you're trying not to win like I mean don't look at me, Stat, man. If they win 90% of the games for the rest of the season, maybe they'll have a shot at the eight seed. I don't know. Is that their plan? I, I have no idea what they're trying to do here. I can't make heads or tails of them. Please I'm, let me know. Uh, yeah. Fan mail, at Real Fans, Real Talk. Someone from the Knicks over there, come on, you know, hit me up on Twitter or and something. Let thing. me know what's going on in your mind so I can understand, please. <laughs> I don't think that, that they can win 90% of their games anyway. I mean, that's yeah. a, that's a, a oh. high, extremely high percentage. So I don't even know if that's even possible. So they might want to just, you know, play coach. Maybe they can trade some more, you know, who's playing the best basketball for the Knicks right now outside of Melo? Just trade that person too. <laughs> I don't want them to trade Hardaway Jr. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, that's, that's the guy I wanted to keep. Uh, I mean, he's not really, yeah. Uh, Plus, they don't have any more shooting guards now, so they kind of have to, to keep him. 
Yeah, I, I guess they made it set that that was their guy, but we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. Do do we have the voice in the sky for shot for shot? If if so, just say hi. Uh, at any point in time. If not, we're gonna go into this day in sports history. In the meantime, see if you guys could set that up for us. Uh, we we know our guest uh, Sean Fontaine, our usual co-host, is not in the building once again. Uh, the HGH uh, scandal. Um, yeah, they, they usually give him more you know, more days. You know, when, if you know after the second and third time. So you know. We've been fighting for you, though, Fontaine. We, you know, we you want see you him back. on Instagram uh, lifting those weights. Yeah, exactly. Top. That's and that's that's what the problem is. Every time they see one of them pictures up, they're like, you know, like he's, he's definitely, definitely he's definitely yeah, he's juicing. juicing. <laughs> so that that's what it is. All right. But it is so good, though. Shout out to Fontaine, man. This this day in sports history in 1980, Larry Holmes TKO's Lorenzo Holmes in six for the heavyweight championship of the world. That's right, and in 1998, New York Yankees replaced general manager Bob Watson with Brian Cashman. 1998, didn't they win it? That's that's coming the, off the, the, the World Series, 90, right? 96 and 98. That's what I'm saying. Maybe they need to get go back. But then and they get, won 99 uh, and 2000. So. Well, yeah, I guess does uh, too. But you know, I don't know, man. I'm I'm just tired of cash. I'm just tired of every everybody yeah. in up well, the brass. Maybe it's Bob Watson who who got the job done in the first. Well, I mean, Cashman made some good moves to 99 too. So yeah. But they could have been already in place. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe they talked about it prior, and he told them, you know, this is what we're gonna we're gonna do. So I don't know, but I I can't call. I it. always called it the curse of the Giambino because after we got Giambi, we didn't win one yeah. until 2009. But um, and two th this day in sports history in 2002 Super Bowl 36 Patriots beat the Rams. Tom Brady named MVP. All right, and in 2008, I know you're going to like this one, Stat, mm -hmm. man. Super Bowl 42, Giants beat Patriots. Eli Manning named MVP. That is correct. I remember that day very well. And this day, uh, you'll remember this one. <laughs> in 2013, Super Bowl 47, the Ravens beat the 49ers, and Joe Flacco named the MVP. Yes, sir. Uh, shout out to the to to my man Uncle Ray 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 Lewis on that one. Went off on a good note with that championship ring right there. All right, we got some birthday shout outs. Uh, happy birthday, Emily, uh, Neil Griffin, and uh, Vladi Divac. Mr. Flop. That's uh, now. That's did he did he credited for, for originating the flop, Vladi? Vladi Daddy, we like to party. Was uh, it? He wasn't. <laughs> I mean, the the flop is pretty old school. It, it goes back to like the Red Orbach days. He made too, it famous like, though. I, yeah, Vladi yeah. made definitely made it famous. He might not have invented it, but he made it famous. And uh, also, we got another stat for you uh, of this day in sports history. Actually, yesterday, uh, in this day in 1936. We had the first five members of the Hall of Fame, uh, Cobb, Johnson, Matthewson, Ruth, and Wagner. So uh, that's uh, that covers this day in sports history. Shout out, shout out to all those guys, man. That's, that's, that was some rings right there. That was a couple of rings, a couple of the, the greatest to ever do it as well in, in that Hall of Fame class. Uh, we talked about the, the Cavs. So, uh, how long do you think their winning streak will last? Over or under 50 <coughs> games? Um, I'm going to say over. If they play, because the next game is against the Clippers, which I think is going to be a tough game. If they played it in L.A., I may have wavered a little bit because I think that would have been a tougher game in L.A. But at home in Cleveland, I have to to go you know, with the Cavs. And then the next couple of games, and then they got the Pistons, they got Miami, and uh, Dang and Wade are both hurt. Uh, so I think it's, they have a, a somewhat of a light schedule. So I w I'm going to say over. Yeah, I actually, even though I'm president of the LeBron James Hate Club, it's well documented. I think that they're finally getting the chemistry going. I talked about it in the beginning of the year that Everyone was uh, panicking over there. The <coughs> Cavaliers weren't getting it together. They got way too much talent for them not to get it together. We saw it with the Miami Heat when you first put them together. It didn't exactly mesh well right away. Uh, I think that they're, you know, on a, on a hot streak, 11 games and f 15. I think that they they go past that. It's now, do you think they can pass the, the Hawks' 19 mark? 
I, I got to really look at their competition going forward for those uh, other four games after 15. But, I mean, th they were the favorite to win it all. Yeah. I mean, uh, they uh, got well, their... They got their ma matchups against the Bulls. Or they well, well, they were coming in. Everyone was pretty yeah. much picking them based on the talent. And then you improve on that talent by adding Shumpert, J.R. Smith, Timothy Mozgov, uh, the Nicoliers, as we call it yeah. now. And then now you're looking to, <laughs> they're looking to get Prigioni, too, and everything. Yeah. So um, you, you add those other pieces to the mix on top of it, on top of everything they already had, I think that's – a pretty unstoppable combination. So uh, I definitely think 19 is possible, and they m might even go for the record uh, if they if everything. I mean, if they continue to play. I mean, because they're not even just beating teams. They actually the defense is is yeah. Is I mean, you, clicking. Said, you said it. Nine games holding them to less than 100, 100 points, and these have been a lot of these games have been blowouts, 15 or more points. So you know, it's definitely you know a, a possibility. But again, we we shall see. I mean, I'm 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 loving it. You know, LeBron James has been on a roll. He's healthy, and looking good. So, and and on top of that, I mean, they 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 beat the the Trailblazers in a very tough game without LeBron, which is I thought was a a huge plus for for that team. You know, the way Kyrie Irving stepped up with 55 points, hitting the game winning in three. You know, and all of that. So I think that was that was big for them because that's a huge game against the Trailblazers. So. Uh, you mentioned earlier Paul George might be coming back later this season. You know, we have this question all the time with, with Derek Rose, should he come back towards the end? Um, you know, when we have these injuries of should they just, you know, just wait out the season or should or should he come back and try to make a, you know, a, uh, depending on when he comes back, if it would even be relevant, do you think he should? I'd say... Uh because I think uh, Indiana is still is still in the hunt. I mean, it is Eastern Conference. Um, but honestly, I would say stay out because if they even if you know the Pacers get a playoff spot, guaranteed playoff spot, you still now have to come back and you have to rework that chemistry because the guys that they you know that's out there now, it's completely different with Paul George because Paul George becomes the center of attention on that team. So I think that that would kind of throw things off at that point in the season, and then you really don't have much time to kind of build on it. I mean, if he comes back in, let's say, May, like the first week of May, and then you got it. No, I'm sorry, not even April. You have to come back in the first week yeah. of April, and then you have the month of April to really get it together. Maybe, but honestly, you know, I think – what a lot of people will look at is the Derrick Rose situation. Yeah. And should he come back early? So I would say no. I would just say, is it really worth it? You're young. Stay out this year. Because even if you come back this year, I don't see the Pacers winning a, a championship this year. So I would say, you know what, just get healthy. Just stay away, stay away get healthy, and then come back next season better than ever. We, we see all the time, though, you know, the other team tends to get injured. You know, yeah. It's happened with several players, so... You know, I mean, Kobe went in and came right back out. Derrick Rose, we saw over and over again. So, you, do you want to chance it with your young franchise player? And then something worse happens. Just let him take the time off, man. He's not like if the Pacers were in first place right now, dominating the league, and he was healthy to come back. Then I'd say, you know what? Yeah, bring him back. But it's, that's not the case. So you know what? Just just let him fully heal, take the time to rest, and then just get ready for next season. All right. Now, your wifey boo, Serena Williams, uh, is the subject of the next question. Over or under 25% Serena Williams wins all four Grand Slams this year. She, she won three before. All right. And the one that she didn't lose, I believe, that, that she didn't win that year was the Australian Open. However, she has... Her, her roughest would be at the French Open on those clay courts, even though she won, she did win it that year. Um, Wimbledon, she can take that, you know, and the U.S. Open definitely with eyes closed take that. She's won the last three years in a row. Um, she's healthy right now. We just had a, you know, we just had a conversation about, you know, what was going to be the next move for the both of us as far as real fans, real talk is concerned and how far, you know, in, in, in the ATP tour. So, you know, she's looking to do it this year. She wants to do it because I believe it's Steffi Graf 
um, did it, and I know she she's coming for the number one spot. Plus, she wants to have that you know that that record. She wants to take the record for most Grand Slams for any female, and I believe it's at uh, twenty four is the record, and she's at nineteen. So, you know that'll put her at uh, what was that twenty two before you know at the end of, end of the year. She can do that, and she's still she's still looking good, man. So again, shout out to Wifey Boo, baby. You you know Trip Young, Trip Young, love you, baby. So you know, keep up doing what you're doing. Get get that French Open winning. If she if she wins the French Open, I would definitely. I think it, it goes up a lot. I'm gonna say over right now, 25. I'm probably say it's about 35 percent right now. But if she wins the, the French Open, I would say it shoots up to about 70 percent chance that she does it. All right. And um, if she wins the, the, the if she wins the Wimbledon, then it goes up to about ninety five percent. There's an unwritten rule here on Real Fans Real Talk that you don't go against Trip Young's wife, you boost Serena Williams. <laughs> so I'm gonna agree with you on this one and say the over. Um but moving along Shout um, out to Djokovic too, who won who won the Australian Open on the uh, on on the men's side. He he beat uh, Andy Murray in the final, so shout out to him. All right. Two more questions regarding the Super Bowl. Did the Patriots win or did the Seahawks lose the Super Bowl? No, the Patriots won that game. And like I'm not gonna take anything away from the Patriots. You wanna say that was a bad call or not, but like you said earlier, you right. know, you wanna be the Monday morning quarterback if he completes that pass. Because again, Russell Wilson did not throw a bad pass there. He threw a great pass. Butler just made a great defensive play right there to get in the way of that pass and get the interception. They won that game. As no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna disrespect the Patriots like that and say that that the Seahawks gave it away. Four touchdown passes from Brady. Yeah, and they can't, and they, you know, they they plus, were down. Plus they came the, back. Yeah, plus the interception on the side. You know, what you pretty much took the words out of my mouth on that one. Um, so. If we did have shot for shot, we'd have a lot of agreement, so we'd make our judge up there uh, <laughs> ha have a difficult time. But uh, which team is more likely to return to the Super Bowl, the Patriots or the Seahawks? That's a rough one. Uh, Russell Wilson is up for a possible extension, but he's, he's coming but back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to bring both of them back. Hmm. I would have to say the Seahawks just because they're in the NFC, but the Patriots can make it back as well. They they really can. I, I mean, both of those teams can make it back. But if, if I got to pick one, I'll say the Seahawks just because they're in the, in the NFC. And, I mean, they're still, right now, they're still the best team in the NFC. So I think they can get back to the Super Bowl again, especially if, they, if they're at home. All right. I'm going to say the Patriots because – the Giants <laughs> got Odell Beckham Jr. <laughs> and Victor Cruz, and plus they got they're picking an offensive lineman with their draft pick. Odell Beckham is just if he plays a full season, that's it. We're 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 going to the Super Bowl. But the Vegas odds actually say that the Seahawks are the the top favorite to win the Super Bowl next year at five to one odds. And the Sea, uh, I'm sorry, the Patriots are six to one. So, um, the odds out there favor the Seahawks, but um, I'm going with the Patriots just because the. Seahawks I mean, listen, are like I said, I mean, I still, it's, it's not like I don't feel like the, the Patriots can make it back. Cause I definitely believe they can make oh, it yeah, back. Oh yeah, they both. You, you know, know, they're both uh, odds on favorites to yeah. make it back. You know, based on. Because I don't honestly, you know, I mean, outside of the Ravens. In the AFC in the playoffs, I, if if they're playing in New England, I don't see too many teams that can beat New England at home in Foxbury in the playoffs. I think honestly, I I feel like it's just the Ravens, the team that could beat them in Foxborough. Other than that, I don't think any other other teams in the AFC could beat them in Foxborough. All right. I mean, yeah, it's 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 definitely a tough call. Hard to beat either team at home, really. But yeah. Uh, I do have a lot of faith for the Giants next year. That's not just a biased Giants fan. I believe we have the ninth overall pick, and we're going with, uh, you know, most likely going with one of the, you know, uh, star tackles out there because Eli definitely needs an offensive line. But he's going to have two great weapons out there. 
which he hasn't, uh, he's never had anybody like Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham is a future, you know, if he stays healthy, he's, you know, future Hall of Famer mm-hmm. in the making there. He's out there. He would have broken the rookie record had he had pl- not missed the first four games. And he got the record for most one-hand catches, the Guinness Book of World Records. I mean, yep. the, everyone talks about the catch, and you, I don't want to beat a dead horse with it, but, I mean, there was a pass interference, and he caught the ball. It's not just that he caught the ball with three fingers. There was a pass interference, and he still managed to get up there, catch it with three fingers. The guy's going to be and unstoppable. And the football wasn't deflated either. You got to throw it. So you know, that, anywhere in his vicinity, that's like a Megatron type it. of thing. He will go out there and, and he'll not, get it. And he's not a 6'4 receiver either. Yeah. You know, this is like, so you, you got to respect that. I'm looking forward to, to next season and see what the Giants do. All right, definitely going to be interesting. You mentioned tennis before. Of course, your wifey boost, uh, Rena Williams, takes the Australian Open. Djokovic, uh, no joke, Djokovic uh, taking the Australian uh title as well Mm -hmm. i just want to throw that out there uh bowling for peace we're going to have a lot of stuff uh, for you guys once again make sure you tune in every tuesday on bronxnet television 5 30 p.m eastern standard time also on thursdays on bpn 8 p.m to 9 p.m realfansrealtalk.com is the website for all the information we got all those interviews coming up in the near future um Jim Jones, Steph Lover, Matt Hoffa, uh, D. Chambers. We got so many interviews out there. Mark John Jeffries. It was a great, funny interview with him. A lot of great stuff coming up for you guys. Make sure you follow us on social media, both Twitter and Instagram, at Real Fan Talk. And like us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk. And, um, We'll, we'll keep setting reminders out there. There's also the Facebook group page if you want to get in on the daily debates. It's um, just search Real Fans Real Talk on, their, on Facebook and you, you'll request to rec- become a member of the group and then you can join in on the daily debates of all various sports topics. But with that being said, it's almost time to wrap things up. Uh, Trip Young, uh, what's your final thought of the evening? Well, before I get to my final thought, let me just let me just say this: uh, your boy Johnny Football has checked into uh, to rehab, so he's actually looking to get uh, get some help. And I'm yeah. actually I'm proud of him. Who I'm not proud of though is his teammate Josh Gordon, who may be facing another suspension this time for the entire season because, of course, he just cannot stay away from trouble, and he has problems, you know, with I guess addiction so he needs to kind of clean his act up and get it together because he could have been you know maybe the the best receiver in football at some point but now you can't be that if you're actually not on the field so he definitely he can't do that either but I, I don't know what's going on with him he needs to take some advice from Johnny football also Richard Sherman is supposed to be having Tommy John surgery I don't know what that means as far as football. It, now, does, it, does that mean he'll be out as long as pitchers will be after he has Tommy John surgery or what? I, he'll probably be able to play in the, in the start of the season. I mean, he's not really throwing. Yeah. Uh, so he could be effective defensively. And now, is that going to affect him as far as interceptions go, though? Maybe, but I doubt it. I mean... That, that, that's a tough one. I mean, I, I think by that time, by the start of the next season, I think he should be fine as far as interceptions because you're not putting that much uh, strain on your, on your elbow as you would as a pitcher. So that's why pitchers take you know, a full year or so to, to recover. So I, I think he'll be fine by the start of the season. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I hope so, because I, I do like Richard Sherman, man. He, he, brings, he brings that level of uh, excitement uh, to football. I love, the, I love the, the trash talk about Richard Sherman. I, I really do. That uh, whole, you, you mad, bro? That, that, <laughs> whole, that whole thing I, I thought was so, so hilarious, man. So I do, I do want him to come back. I want to see the Seahawks back at full strength, because it, it just makes you know, professional sports better. Like, I don't, I don't like getting the, getting the Ws when the team isn't fully healthy 
You know what I mean? It's yeah, just, anytime it, there's any superstar in any sport, like we see with Derrick Rose when yeah. he's out for a while, or even Paul George when he's out for a while, it just takes away from the game. You want every team to have their star players. So yeah. Obviously, you don't want them to have it if they're uh, they're playing your team because you want to get the win any way you can. But at the same time, for the sake of the sport, it's great to have all the stars out there. Richard Sherman, obviously one of the big names out there. So uh, hope, hoping he gets a speedy recovery and we see him back out there for week one when the Seahawks play. Mm -hmm. um, oh, also, one step. Get it together, brother. He getting arrested in hotels. He then got he then lost his job with the NFL Network. He gotta get it together, man. I don't I don't I don't know what's going on with these guys, man. You don't see myself in the stack, man. Just out in the street, just doing crazy nonsense, man. These jobs is important, man. You gotta get out there and act right, man. You can't be messing around, losing them checks like that. That's, that, that's crazy to me, man. All you guys <laughs> acting up. I, I don't know what to say to that, man. He he got to get yourself together, Sap. Come on, man. Don't you see what? Don't you see what your what, what, what your your biggest rival, Michael Strahan, is doing right now? That man is on TV six days a week. He he's on live. How the how the heck does Michael Strahan, you know, defensive end for the New York Giants, get on live with Kelly? That don't even yeah, make no well, sense to me. I mean, I, I was I was <laughs> up there for the top spot, but you know, he asked me. He was like, and the fact that I was a Giants fan my yeah. whole life and everything, I figured I let him have the spot. But you, you know, you're welcome, Mike. You're doing a great job. But uh, with that being said, uh, time for a final thought of, of the program. <laughs> Tri trivia. <laughs> What's your final thought of the evening? Oh, man. Listen, man, just, just make sure y'all continue to support us, continue to follow us. Again, facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk on Twitter and on Instagram at Real, Real Fan Talk. And uh, don't forget, next Tuesday, we got the kids coming to the set. They will be back. Little League baseball team, you know Real Fans Real Talk. We support the kids at all costs, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, myself and the stat, man, we always out there, man. So shout out to the kids, man. We love y'all. All right. My final thought, you talked about the rehab and everything, Johnny Football. A big name like him, that takes a lot of uh, guts out there to uh, announce rehab. A lot of people don't want to admit that they have a problem. He's young. The spotlight is on him. A lot of pressure and everything. I'm sure he made some mistakes along the way, and he's trying to make it right early in his career. So good for him to take that step of recovery. The first step of recovery is admitting that you have a problem. And uh, with that being said, I'd like to thank uh, Trip Young for another great episode. And uh, <laughs> live <laughs> balls again. <laughs> deflated. Join us next Just week. Just do the handoff, oh, that oh, man. Yeah. Just hand it off, all right? Don't try to throw it. Oh, wait. That, that's, that, that's right. That's, that's what the Seahawks should have exactly. done. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. For Trip Young, I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. Thank you all for joining us, and have a good night, everyone. Peace. Real well, fans, like, realtalk.com. Statman, you ready? You ready? <laughs> we didn't have someone else to come in oh, and wait intercept a minute. it. Uh, can we get ahead of the mic Somebody there. get in here. <laughs> we need an interception. All right, intercepted by the crowd. All right, that's just to the fans, man. We'll, we'll see y'all next week, man. You got to get up out of here. Taking some time with the outro there, ladies exactly. and gentlemen. We'll real nice. fans, real talk com. <laughs> Exactly. This message was brought with to you by. With Thomas Trip Young and intern Exactly. Tom. Oh, shout out to Bobby Stone, too, man. At Bobby Stone Music, man. On that's, Twitter. That's that theme song right there. The best theme song since. The, the Fresh, Fresh Prince, Prince of Bel Air. As we always say. So shout out to Bobby Stone. Shout out to D Chambers, too. If you missed that episode, it will be up online tonight, later on tonight. So make sure y'all check that out. All right, and we will see y'all right. next week because they're kicking us off the air and out the studio right now. That's but, true. Uh, it's cold out there, right. ladies and gentlemen. It is cold Stay out warm. there. Drive safe, all right? And stop throwing all that, that snow in the street when you shovel your cars out because that just yeah, messes up everybody's cars, like man. That. Come, Come on, man. man. That's crazy, you know? I mean, but that's the type of thing.